Welcome to another episode of Brave Brave Conversations. Conversations. To all of my old people, the Brave Conversationalist, Konnichiwa. (laughs) And to my new people, I don't really know you like that yet. So you get a hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. You You can become a Brave Conversationalist and enjoy like my Japanese skills if you hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you know when my videos are posted or you can subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast streaming platform you are on and then you can get that special greeting that my old people got but today is an exciting day you want to know why because we finally have our second host on here hello let's get uh, hold on hold on Yes, yes, she's back, she's back, but um, I'm not letting you off the hook. Okay. Give a brief, very brief Mm -hmm. explanation Mm -hmm. to your absence. Um, there is absolutely no excuse I can give. I am guilty. 100%. And all I can do now is just ask for forgiveness. Yes. And... Uh, move forward with better intentions well said thank you okay um so i'm not i'm not gonna get into the nitty-gritty of this episode just know that this episode is special this is a crossover happening right here right now Mm -hmm. um we'll explain more in the episode but just know that you you are witnessing something in the making yeah you are witnessing the origin of something yeah yeah, and God we're glad that you're something. here. He's doing something. He's, He's always on doing the verge, verge of, of something. something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. Maybe I'll share that story with y'all in the future, so you can know, so y- y'all can get in on the, on why we laughing. But yeah. yeah, God is definitely on the verge of something. Absolutely. All right. Without further ado, let's get into this episode. Yeah. In the temporal realm. The testimonies within an individual are considered especially insignificant. On this podcast, the dedicated hosts who articulate these personal narratives are members of an elite community known as the Brave Conversationalists. These are their stories. Yes. Yes. I love it. We are back. Okay, so the reason why this episode is special is because, like I said, it's a crossover. Um, At One Family Church, which is our church home yes. uh, they have this concept called life groups and my mother started a life group this year in February yeah and now we are two sessions in yes and this is called tell a testimony mm-hmm. tell that testimony yeah. yeah so why don't you explain exactly what tell a testimony is mm-hmm. like your purpose for it and yeah. maybe even tell us like where, where the name came from. Like, tell us your genius. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like this was definitely something that was placed inside of me, um, honestly, for years. And just last year, it really started to come together, like visually, even even the name, you know, of it. And it's just basically all based off my personal journey. Mm. And um, one thing about it is that I never, I'll be honest with you, I, I've never sought to be, Uh, inspirational or encouraging, but I started to see that that stuff kind of just naturally flowed out of me. Right. And I guess the only way for me to explain it is that the reason that it it, it flows so naturally is because I've experienced a lot of hardships. I've, I, um, I've seen so many places. Oh Lord, we got the vocals. Oh Lord, like seriously, I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry, I can't help myself. Um, I don't know why the Lord didn't give me a voice. Yeah, I think I know. (laughs) Um, um, and so honestly, I've 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 experienced a lot of challenges, a lot of hardships, and um. I, I'm a I'm I'm a filler. I'm an emotional person, and so when I tell the the stories of my past, it I still connect to it emotionally. And to be honest with you, if I even think that somebody is feeling even an ounce 
of what I was feeling when I was in my lowest of lows in my darkest of places, um, I naturally want to snatch them up out of it. Mm. And so when I tell you, when I see somebody that is hurting or that is in need and don't let it be something that I don't went through. Oh, um, I'm putting aside everything. I'm putting aside my fear. Uh, I'm, I'm getting very bon- uh, vulnerable and personal because, um, baby, you listen, I've been set free and you, you about to find out how to get free. And free indeed. Uh-huh. And so, free at last. Um, free at last. And so, honestly, it's just from um, my journey, my faith journey, and honestly seeing the power of telling a testimony, the, the power in that, how you uplift people, how you encourage them, how you give them hope for a future. Yeah. And um, sometimes it's not even a hope. Sometimes it's a, it's a warning. Mm-hmm. It's a caution. Yeah. You know, don't go that way. Cause I done been there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, so yeah, anything to just help, uh, help one another, help, help each other out to, to do better, to be better. Um, and to strive, you know, for just more out of life. So that's the whole, uh, at least a, a quick synopsis of how tell a testimony came, um, to life. But I think oftentimes is that what I'm experiencing now is being uh, uh, far removed from some of those challenges is that I'm starting to see oftentimes that people, especially new people uh, that are introduced into my life, they're just seeing the now they're seeing almost the result. Mm. Um, And so it's very important for me and for anybody else that has a story to tell of how God has redeemed them, how he has restored them, how he has um, saved them. Then I think that it's really important for people to understand that you don't just get to a place, especially when you have somebody, um, I hate to say it, but uh, coveting what you have and or who you are. Or, you know, unless nine days they say hating, you know, hating on you or hating on who you are. When you see that, I think it's very important for people to understand the context of all of that. So, yeah, that's how tell a testimony came apart. And I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm actually also a, a member of tell a testimony. I just became a co-leader this session, this summer session we got going on. Absolutely. Yeah, I was a member first, but then I was like, you know what, let me help her out with this. This this is good. This is good stuff. You know, honestly, it was more than just let me help her out with it. Let me just say the perspective that you bring, not only being a young person, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, she's college. College. Yes. College. <laughs> okay. She's college. No, um... <laughs> You know, there were essentially uh, members of various ages uh, when we first uh, started Tell a Testimony. And um, you were by far the youngest. Yeah. But when I tell you (laughs) the wisdom you was coming with was hitting. I'm glad. The the spirit of the Lord was coming through you. Use me. Use me, Holy Spirit. The the Holy Spirit was speaking. Yes. Yes. Uh, He had something to say, and he said it through you. So, no, seriously. Um... And so I'm just very appreciative to um, not only be able to lead this life group, but then have such amazing members such as yourself um, come together collectively and share what God is doing in our lives, what he has done, what he's about to do um, and what he's revealing to us. Yeah. One thing I like about, the life group is that it's it's um it's a space for people who usually don't talk you know talk to other people or have anxiety i know me personally i have a lot of anxiety we talked about that last video about my anxiety and so um this is actually i found myself being the initiator in conversations you know because i just feel so comfortable of sharing my story and like hearing other people and you know just looking at their lives and it puts my life in perspective and i learned a lot you yeah. know, because a lot of the members are older than me. So I get wisdom, y'all. If you're young like me and you need some wisdom in your life, come mm-hmm. on, come on, come listen come to listen these testimonies, to man. You know, <laughs> um, I, I've been given a nickname. Uh, yes. By you. By, and by me and my friends. She is known as Mother Wisdom. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is Mother Wisdom. You're I don't know why to. I always think about the willow tree in Pocahontas <laughs> when y'all say that. <laughs> wisdom, like I'm old and got all the. Um, but no, I appreciate it. And here's the thing the ironic thing is that 
um, you guys, you, yes, you are younger people. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I believe it was your friends, right, um, that started calling me that first. And, yeah, uh, and my they, friends called. I didn't come up with that name. I didn't come up with that name because she's my mom. And, you know, she's been giving me wisdom basically all my life. My friends actually approached me and was like, Autumn, you know, your mother is just so wise. Yeah. She's so wise. I'm, I'm going a, I'm to a start calling her Mother Wisdom. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is so funny. And, that, like, you know, when they revealed that to me or whatever, um, I, I think what it is, what what they're identifying with is that what I said, that vulnerability. Yeah. Right. Um, my my desire that when I see somebody struggling with something, um, listen, there's no filter when it comes to that. Like, I don't play. You're not going to stay gripped mm-hmm. uh, within the the arms of, of the enemy. You're, you're just not 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 when I'm seeing it. Yeah. And so if I can do anything about it. Um, that's the way I tell my story in a way to where, um, I'm going to give you tools, um, to get free. And the ultimate tool is, I mean, it's Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus. And and I know a lot of times some people, especially if it's something that they're, they're really wanting uh, or that they see and I, um, tell them what it is like for, for surface value, you know, face value. Um, sometimes people reject that because it seems like too, too simple, or it doesn't seem like it's the real solution for them when I say that. But I promise you, it really is. Yeah. Uh, it has made all the difference in my life. Uh, and so that's why my soul cries out, hallelujah. Um, I, listen, don't don't let me get spiritual up on this <laughs> Get spiritual. Please, that's the whole let me point. Get, don't let me go there. <laughs> um, like, seriously. Because, uh, you know, I start off joking. And before I know it, Autumn know I'll be in a full-blown shout. <laughs> uh, tears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah and all but no seriously and so i think that's what they're connecting with when they yeah. say that it's like uh they feel like it's this profound wisdom but really i see it as i'm just kind of telling my telling what i've gone through you're telling a testimony yeah i'm telling a testimony yeah so um last uh session which is the spring session um we were not only do we talk about god during this life group and we we talk about our stories and people share their tidbits and back and forth but we also study uh, the Bible, of course, the word of God. We, we studied the word of God. And so last session we studied first Samuel, but this time around, it's, the format is a little different. Go ahead mm-hmm. and tell us what the format is this session. Yeah. So I think it's important to note that the reason that the, uh, uh, the biblical, the Bible component is so important of tell the testimony is because you could, you could think of, we're, we're kind of uh, Bibles in the flesh. Exactly. You know, we're not on pages. We're not, uh, our testimonies are not on pages. We're speaking them in our mouth in, and in on real social time, media. but the Bible <laughs> is the word of God. It is, it is all brought up, brought forth, um, um, by God. It is every word in it is motivated, uh, uh, and brought on by um, by God. And so if we want to understand, uh, know God's character, uh, know his ways, and essentially even know who we are because we are created in his image, right? Right. Um, we have to read his word. And so that's why it's important to have that Bible um, component, a part of Testimony. And so, again, last uh, uh, the spring semester, we were studying out the book of Samuel. Uh, we were talking about we, David. David. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. David and that Saul good old David and all that ridiculousness. And so, um, <laughs> and so this semester I found it to be important because, um, let me just tell you something. I love our church home. I love where we go to praise and worship. Um, and so we are really truly getting fed there. Yes. Um, and how do we know we're getting fed? Because see, we, we, we're in our Bible. Every day, um, um, we study the Word of God, and so mm-hmm. therefore, when we, when we, because, because, and, and by studying, we are learning, we are uh, yep. knowing God in a more intimate way. We are learning His character, we are learning His ways, and so therefore, when I'm in a sermon, um, and I hear you, can, He say, "My sheep will know my voice." That's right. Right. So we know when a message is coming from God, and so we're truly being fed. Um, at one family church. And so for this, I decided for the summer sessions that what we would do, uh, like instead of uh, focusing on a book of the Bible, we would dive deeper into the Sunday sermons that are being um, um, spoke, the messages that are being given on on Sundays at one family church. Yes. And we actually would do this. um, 
we did this every Sunday as a family, me, my mom, and my brother. And we would, you know, after every weekly celebration is what they call them. Um, we would just discuss what we took away from the sermon. Like what, how did it impact us personally? And so we brought that forth to tell a testimony. Yeah. Um, and that is a way for people to tell their story, but also to, you know, continue to grow spiritually mm -hmm. with the church family. A absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They can kind of tell where they've been and we can mm -hmm. kind of talk about where we are now because see, God is a living God. He is active uh, right now. And so we can take the word and we can figure out how to, uh, how to, how it applies to us now and apply it to our lives. Um, this was so unique because when the three of us d uh, do it, me, you and Aaron, um, man, I'm telling you, I'm amazed each and every time that's three different perspectives and we yeah. seem to always have three different uh, perspectives uh, and God has spoken to us in a different way. Yes. We, heard, we heard the same message. But it just it just came about, it hit us in a different way, like exactly yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, with that being said, uh, this past Sunday, we just ended uh, a series that Pastor Brent started called Check your pace yes. okay in order to run the race like jesus we need to go at the pace of jesus of jesus um and so uh this part five sermon that we will be discussing today um was titled keep your eyes on, on the, the prize. prize and let me just say um if you're listening to this today and you feel encouraged um, you feel that God has spoken a word to you, then I'm going to encourage you to go to onefamilychurch.com um, where you can then get access um, or download the One Family app. app. We They have an app. Yes. <laughs> where you can get access to those past sermons because it really was a good series. It was, it a, was good a good series. series. Very yeah. needed. Very in this, needed. In this season of my life, at least, I can mm -hmm. say for myself, very needed. Yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. Agree for sure. Um, so, yeah, so today, um, last Sunday, you know, Pastor Brent spoke on keeping your eyes on the prize. And this mm -hmm. is the, the sermon that he ended the series on. So let's dive into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this sermon was heavily based off of Luke chapter 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it started at verse... 38. Yeah. Now I'm not going to read verbatim what the that chapter because we should all be reading our Bibles. Yes. So go ahead and read it for yourself in the version that you like so that you can understand. But I'm going to give you the rundown of what's going on in this situation. Please do. Jesus is paying a visit to Mary and Martha. Or I should say Martha and Mary because that's how they're introduced first. Um in Bethany, okay? It is Jesus and his disciples, 12 of them now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 13 people. All right, so they, they swoop up on Mary, on Martha, right. and they like, Martha, hey, <laughs> long time no see. Mm -hmm. How about you let us, you know, room here for a while. Let's, let's, let's sit down and, you know, they communicate. They had a plan. They had yeah. a plan. They was like, let's go to Martha's house. Yeah, y'all yeah, know Martha. You know the one in Bethany? Oh, yeah, she'll take us in. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah she'll come in. Yeah. So, you know, Martha's like, oh, yeah, for sure. On the chain, say for sure. But she was like, yeah, Jesus, like, come on in. Take your friends, too. If you a friend of Jesus, you a friend of me. Yeah. So she let them all in, right? And so they're, they're in, I'm assuming they're in the living room. It doesn't really say, but I'm just kind of give you all a picture here. They're in the living room, mm -hmm. Jesus and all his disciples. And everybody's just kiki and, you know, having a good old time, re relaxing. Everybody, Jesus probably got his feet rested up on the, on the ottoman. And, yeah. You know, he's just, he's just chilling. But Martha is ripping and running. Is ripping and running, y'all. She's being the host. Mm -hmm. okay it's her house she, she got to show out yeah so she knows she's giving people drinks and snacks and making sure everybody's all right jesus you good you good you good everybody she's good? being hospitable mm -hmm. exactly and i can definitely relate to that exactly so first of all quick note let's go back why y'all show up in my house unannounced okay but that's okay. another story okay <laughs> See. Saying. so martha i'm just saying i want to paint this picture you know she has a, a group of people that showed up at her house so definitely 13. she kicks into she kicks into hyper mode right to try to receive these guests that mm -hmm. have come to her house exactly so uh you know martha's ripping and running all over the place and then martha turns you know she's probably frustrated you know She's like, oh, this is getting stressful now. All these, all these mouths to feed and stuff, and she looks down at Jesus's feet, 
And she sees her sister Mary just mm-hmm. resting. And lazy. Healing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kicking with Jesus. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But Martha's like, uh-uh. Ex- well, I was like, except she's not helping me. Right. She's not helping me. Yeah. Be the hostess guess. to Jesus. Exactly. Making sure Jesus get a good experience at this house. Mm-hmm. You just sitting there laying at his feet. Got me doing all the work. All the work. Exactly. All the work. So Martha turns to Jesus and says, Jesus. Isn't it unfair that I'm sitting here doing all this work while she just laying at your feet? Tell her to help me. Yeah. And she's just like, Martha, Martha, mm-hmm. chill. Yeah. Peace be with you. He ain't say that, but peace. Mary has discovered the one thing that is most important. Yeah. And it will not be taken away from her. Uh, in other words, let me translate. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to tell her anything because right. she's not doing. She's not nothing doing wrong. nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. You are too focused on all these details. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come, come. He basically saying, "Come sit with me, come rest, yeah. be yeah. at peace." Exactly. <laughs> and I think it's important to. Here's the thing, and this this is what um, when I was looking at um, the sermon, what stood out to me was when he began to talk about Martha mm-hmm. and he began to give a little bit of context uh, behind Martha, uh, behind Martha's character and who Martha is. And so he gave context to the time period, right? Because this was a very long time ago. And he made note that Martha is the head of household, which is very rare. Yeah. Back in Bible times. Yeah. You were married at a pretty young age. I think the the youngest was probably 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she wasn't married. And I, I actually have a little bit of information about that. Yeah, about to get college. You're about to get college. Get your pencil, notebooks, write down these facts here. I'm about to get you. I actually titled this Facts About Martha. Mm. Okay? Because we was always focused on Mary, but Martha is the star of this story. Yeah. Okay, first fact. Martha and Mary, I'm going to include her, um, Nowhere in the Bible does it says that they are married, like we just stated, Mm -hmm. okay? And so um, it could be that they're widowed. It could be that they're just, they're still waiting. Everybody, you know, especially in today's time, we just wait. Mm -hmm. We just waiting for the right one. Waiting on Boaz. But what I learned is that, you know, during this time in the New Testament, there were three different Jewish sects or, you know, groups Groups. within Mm -hmm. the community. So um, we know two of them, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. But there's one group that's not really mentioned in the Bible often, and they were called the Essenes. Okay. Now, the reason why they weren't mentioned much is because they they didn't like that public spotlight. They didn't like their name being floated around like that. They were a very close-knit network of communities, okay? Mm -hmm. And so it is assumed that the Essenes had a community within Bethany, which is where Mary and Martha and Lazarus live. And so it is assumed based off that, that uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were a part of the Essenes Jewish group. Now, what's special about the Essenes is that um, it is tradition for them, for them not to get married and for them to swear or vow um, a life of singleness and celibacy. Mm. So people are assuming that that is the reason why Mary and Martha um, are not yet married is because they, they just vowed not to, not to do that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so Martha, um, is the head of household. And the reason why we think that is, is because she's always mentioned first, anytime mm-hmm. they're mentioned in the Bible. And usually the oldest is the first to be mentioned. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, she, she's taking care of her siblings. Like Pastor Brent said in the sermon, she's the CEO of yeah. that time. She's, she's a she's boss. She's a CEO. She's a boss. She's handling things. She's getting things done. And so, um, and so with her being the, the head of household, she's always the hostess. Like yeah. when people come over. Another thing about the us scenes is that they they value taking care of the poor and the sick. And so they probably always have people in and out their house because mm-hmm. they, you know, so they're always Martha is probably always being that hostess. She's on the go. There's no rest. There's no peace. Yeah. That, that's her job. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't get to come home and like, okay, job is over. I get the rest. 
no her job is at her home yeah <laughs> so yeah. she's always being this hostess and so that's why i think that martha got really frustrated with mary is because mary probably does doesn't you know do mm-hmm. the most of the work when it comes to being a hostess yeah and so at this she just reached her breaking point especially with jesus being the most prominent leader um rabbi at the time and yeah he this is it like this we have a celebrity in the house mm-hmm. this has to be perfect yeah so she's trying to do all that and then on all in all honesty to look and then see somebody relaxing right on the floor at, mm-hmm. at the feet of jesus like you have nothing to do when you know full and well right you need to be helping me right this is not mary's first rodeo yeah about you know being having people over yeah okay do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, and so it, we we got to take it back to that time. During that time, the, the in the culture of the Essenes, uh, being hospitable and serving people meals, it was almost, um, it was expected. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, when people come over your house, you be a hostess. You be a good hostess. Yeah. And so um, that brings me to, so this is not a bad thing that Martha is doing. We're not like saying like, Oh, she shouldn't be doing that at all. Like God wants us to do these things. They want us to take people in yeah. and treat them like you would treat Jesus. Absolutely. Right. If somebody come over, you know, like you got to look at it. They was, they was on a, um, a journey. And so I'm sure they're hungry. They're thirsty. You don't want to just turn them away. So she's definitely doing, um, things that you are, you should do. These are good things she's doing, but I like where, um, and this is where it, it, it hit me. When, um, when Pastor Brent said, um, but Martha was distracted doing all the things and that we are too easily distracted, right? So Martha was very easily distracted with good things, but then he goes on to say, don't let good things distract you from the main thing, Mm. which is essentially what Martha was doing. Yes. Right. Um, she those were good things right but it was distracting her um from the main thing to where she wasn't even focused on what was really important and that is you know intimacy yeah with jesus learning yeah from jesus she had him in the flesh i was gonna say she had the messiah right there right there in, in her house and he's giving you lessons he's giving you instructions first-hand knowledge on how to live mm-hmm. and to be at peace yeah and you just focused on the details, as Jesus says in the Bible. Martha, you're focused on all these details. Exactly. That's not important. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't help but, I'm telling you, but I couldn't help but say to myself and be real and, and say, let me find out uh, I'm a Martha. Right. Because <laughs> when I tell you, I when he talked about her being the head of household and, and her being a boss and even how she was, you know, as a hostess, you know, firsthand that when I am hosting something, mm-hmm. it gets real. It's so crazy because I, 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 I think about all the little details and how much my guests are going to enjoy the little details. But when the day comes, I'm so busy with everything. I'm not enjoying the guest, the connection, the guest with family, exactly. friends, or whoever's on my house, because with, I'm trying to make sure everything is, is perfect. And that's the whole point of having gatherings mm-hmm. is to catch up with the people you invited yeah. to make that connection. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And I definitely, I, I did. I was like, Ooh, well, let me find out. Uh, <laughs> let me find <laughs> out. I'm, I'm, I'm a Martha. I actually, when I actually wrote that down also in my notes when he said it, but it actually, for me, is actually a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, Recently, I've started, you know, content creation. And most of my content is for the, to spread the good news, which is the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's dedicated, my my content creation is dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. And so I get so focused on the fact that I'm doing this for the Lord. Okay, I am I am one of his disciples. I have to do this. This is what he wants me to do. Yeah. That I forget that he also wants me mm-hmm. to get closer to him. Yeah. My whole goal is to get other people closer to him and like I get so fixated mm-hmm. on the things that I'm studying, the the scriptures that I'm reading. The first thing that pops in my head is like how do I 
make somebody understand this scripture right. instead of thinking that maybe the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to me. To you. I, you don't I always say that. I, yeah. So like a long time ago when I was younger, um, I would take things so literal when I was hearing the word of God or if I would go to church and um, start service. And then if I instantly couldn't connect what, was being preached if i felt like it wasn't relevant to me right i would instantly be uh started thinking who is that for exactly this, this is for someone else and or if i heard something or if they're preaching about something and 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 about something that i know somebody that i know does again i'm like mm, this this for such and such yeah this for such and such and and the lord had to speak to me then and said every word that you hear is for you yes and so that was something that I've always taught you and Aaron, you know, in the in the beginning to know that right. Because, listen, once I get a piece of, a piece of wisdom or a piece of knowledge, yes. I'm definitely <laughs> sharing it. I'm sharing it. And so um, that's what I meant when I always tell y'all, listen, when you do hear the word of God, even if you feel in your heart of hearts, this ain't for me. Yeah. They ain't talking about me. Go pray. Mm -hmm. Ask God, how does this relate to me, Lord? Because he told me then and I believe him and I've I've seen that to be true. Right. Right. After he spoke that to me, I've seen that to be true, that every word that you hear is for you. Yeah. It's going to be for you first before and it's for anybody else. I remember you telling me that growing up. But like Martha, I just got distracted by doing the good things. Mm -hmm. And I started to see that even in my devotional time, that a time where it's just it is just me and God. That's the time for God to, you know, put to teach me. Yeah. That's the time for me to get intimate that I'm so focused on everybody else. Mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm and I'm justifying it by saying, well, I'm a disciple for the Lord. Right. I have to do this. Right. I have to mm -hmm. figure out how to, you know, get other people closer to God because that's what he want me to do. Yeah. That's what I expected. Yeah. I mean, but here, and, and let's get into this because I want to talk about this because I feel like this is something that everybody battles and struggles with. Yeah. And you'll hear people complain about that they don't have time to sleep. Mm -hmm. Or they barely have time to eat or they don't have time for their their spouse or they don't have time for their children or their children are taking all of their time and they don't have anything for any um, to do anything else. And, and I'm saying this because I'm guilty of it, too. And you cannot convince them, right, that they can give up something. Yeah. Um, to begin to make time for what's important. But let me let me say this. How many times do we honestly sit there and look at everything we got going on in our lives um, on a day to day, week to week? How many times do we actually sit there and look at that and ask ourselves, is all of this really necessary? Right. Can I eliminate some of this? And it's and this is going to be hard for people because I've actually had this con these conversations with people. And I'm telling you, they are not convinced that there's something that is not essential that they got going on. Right. With everything. Because they'll give you an excuse as to why that is of the utmost importance for them to be doing. Right. And let me tell you something. Our wells are going to run dry each and every time if we think that we can keep just going, 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 going without tapping into the ultimate source that gives us every ability um, to be able to do the things that we need to do. Yes. And that is God. And so essentially that's what was going on in the story that Martha was so focused on um, all the things that were worthy. They were necessary things to get done. Right. But she was missing out on what the most important thing was, which is was spending time with Jesus. It was that intimate connection, that one on one time that in that case. And, 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 and so I want to I want to make this practical because look at it. Let's look at it. Let's be real. If Martha wasn't so busy trying to be a hostess, maybe getting them water, maybe getting them food. Let me ask you something. Would they have not gotten a drink? Let God do his if part. If they were thirsty. Wow. Jesus was right there. If you think about it, like mm -hmm. Jesus, he would never let his disciples go yeah. thirsty, go would, hungry. Yeah, exactly. Would they have not gotten a, if, if it wasn't Martha physically run, ripping and running and doing all these things, would they have not, eaten yeah would they have not received a drink they're cared for <laughs> oh you just oh my goodness that just opened my eyes in this moment right now because not only does jesus i have to remember this is just talking for me i feel like the holy spirit was just talking to me a little bit mm. i have to remember that like i am not 
the source. Yes. And I was operating like I was the source for these people. Like if I didn't stop, if I didn't stop, if I stopped doing Mm -hmm. the things that I think are good, which they they are good, that they wouldn't receive (laughs) the word of God. No, God is going to make sure that his, his children, they are also his children. I'm not, I'm not his only child. Mm -hmm. He will make sure that they will receive what they need. Yeah. So I need you not only, you know, continue to do the good work. Cause that's what he wants us to do. Yeah, but I also need you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I need that connection with you. Intimacy, Absolutely. like Pastor Brent said, intimacy is more important than activity. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Cause you get caught up, and I know. I mean, I feel like even even when you're doing like with in your case, this is worthy. Um, this is worthy activity. Right. You know, you're trying to spread the gospel. Um, you're a young person. You're trying to connect with other people, other young people, you know, even older people who may get inspired and encouraged to see a young person seeking God uh, in the way that you are. So, um, you know, my whole thing is that then how do we, I mean, let's really think about this. So then how do we prioritize? Mm-hmm. How do we begin to really um, decide then what's important and how we're spending our time. And, and again, amongst people who would argue you to the grave that it just can't be done. They simply just don't have the time. Um, they can't, they can't do this. Yeah. One of the things that pastor Brent, um, that's, that's why I really love about his sermons that he gives you practical steps that you could take on your own and, you know, fix yeah. up for your situation. One thing that really hit me, though, was he said, if you're overwhelmed by the many, focus on the one. Mm. And I also remember. That uh, yes, yeah, that, was good. that was good. I also remember a couple of uh, sermons ago. He also said, start start by single tasking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really took that to heart. And for me, what I do um, is that I just do that. Like, first, I evaluate my duties. I think they're duties. And I say, um, is this helping me Mm -hmm. get more intimate with God not nobody else is this helping me yeah based off that question half the things on my list are cut off (laughs) and then um if I still have like if I start to see oh I still have many tasks I just do one by one Mm -hmm. I don't focus on the other ones I don't think about the other ones until the first one is completed and usually um and I give myself grace Mm mm-hmm if I don't complete the whole list. Yeah. Because I'm I'm basically I'm saying like I'm relinquishing my time to you, God. Yeah. You are the controller of my time. So anything I get completed, I know it was a part of your will. Mm-hmm. And I accept that. Absolutely. And I tell myself, don't be so hard on yourself. Because if it if it needs to be done, if God's saying this needs to be done, mm-hmm. it will be done. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, for me, what my 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 takeaways from this was um, not even so much as single tasking, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say I have that down packed. That's definitely something I feel like I personally need to work on as well. Um, but I oftentimes don't find myself trying to juggle too much at once. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit seasoned to the point where I'm a little bit better. But my whole thing was that I was looking at what can be eliminated. Mm. Like, seriously, what can be eliminated? And that's what I was harping on. And I have to say this. I mean, you know this, but I'll say it for everybody that's listening, um, because I don't think that anybody outside of people who know me personally um, or know me in a more intimate way knows this. So, you know, I lost my car last year in the flooding that happened during the summer of last year. So I'm not going to get into all of that. But I have been taking um, the bus and the train to work. Um, So I always used to take, I used to drive to the train and then take the train to work. But now I'm taking the bus to the train um, to go to work. And so without me having a car, uh, I do Uber too uh, for things like, you know, uh, social outings and things like that. But with me doing Uber, I'm not doing as many social outings um, and things as I did. And when I tell you at the time, If that hadn't happened and then you you would have told me that I can start to carve things out of out of my life. And I guess what is what do they call it? The fear of of missing out. 
FOMO. Yeah, I had <laughs> real bad FOMO. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, all these little social engagements or opportunities would come my way. And it's like, oh, yes, 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 yes. I was a yes man. Like, just saying <laughs> yes. To, just saying yes to everything that was coming my way and really thought at the time that was just the life to live. I don't think anybody could have convinced me at that time to really carve back on that, right. to say that it's, it's not important. But this one little thing happened happening to me it actually opened up my eyes on a lot of different things which we don't have time to get into that now but I will tell you one thing that it did is that it caused me to really look at things and say um is this replenishing me right because that's how people uh, experience burnout, right? Because you're so busy with things that are not pouring back into you. We always talk about people. D -d -d that person ain't pouring into me. I ain't going to pour into them. But even things. Yes. Just all these activities. How is that replenishing you? you right. You know, how is that uh, nourishing your body or nourishing your mind? Ooh, nourishing your mind. Because mm. we talked about that, how you spend, how much time people spend on strolling through social media. Yeah, doom strolling. That's what he called it. Yeah, and yeah. that's not nourishing your mind. It's really not. Ooh. It's not nourishing your mind. And, and for me personally, social media does not. It, it goes against everything Philippians 4 talks about. Mm -hmm. It's like, feel, think about things that are admirable, worthy yeah. of praise, exactly. that are excellent. Yeah. And I, my feed, is, it has nothing of that nature in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just filling my mind with, you know, uh, uh, despair, depression, tragedy, anger. Exactly. And it's just not it's not nourishing for my mind. Mm -mm. It's not nourishing at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself being um, less productive. It's, right. it's, it's amazing how much time that sucks up. Yeah. Um, before you know it, hours mm -hmm. of your day that you're spending like that. So with that being said, Autumn, you just kind of revealed some things. Let's talk about it. I mean, what are you going to put into place? Yeah. Like, cause let's make this practical. Like, I, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear the word of God and then chew and understand the yeah. word of God, but then can't apply. Exactly. The word of God. Yeah. So there's actually two things that I, that I started doing since the series. And that's um, during my devotional time, I put on my personal focus. I'm an iPhone user. Okay. Mm -hmm. iPhone over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, we have, you know, the personal f focus thing where it, 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 it eliminates any notifications. Yeah. Okay. I don't get no calls coming through. Nothing. That is my time with God. I put that phone away like it's a stapler, as, mm -hmm. as Pastor Brent said. It's a stapler. I only use it when I need it. Yeah. Another thing I do is that um, I, I'm starting to uh, be very strict with my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. my Sabbath is on Saturdays and um, initially what I, I was, I was doing the Sabbath before pastor Brent brought it up, but I was watching TV. I was binge watching ER mm -hmm. law and order. Law and order. The, the first 48. Yes. <laughs> I, I was a couch potato. And uh, after the sermon he did about the Sabbath, I realized I was kind of um, not doing it wrong per se, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it wasn't feeding me. It wasn't, it feeding, wasn't feeding me. Right. So um, now for my Sabbath, um, I, I, I put away social media. I put away mm -hmm. the TV. Um, and I read books either yeah. either by authors who are also followers of God and Jesus and just talks about how to um, get closer with him. Mm -hmm. Or I just read the Bible. Yeah. I studied the Bible like more, more than more than in my devotional. Now, I feel like that's something I need to learn from you because... Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, I would definitely classify myself as one of those people that spend too much time um, doom strolling. Yeah, for sure. And um, I, I this is a this is a sore spot for Autumn, y'all. When I every time I bring this up, but Lord, I don't like to read. Oh, that breaks my heart. Um, Autumn is a it tried and true book. My heart. And she thought that I was an avid reader. She because me. I would force her to read. <laughs> she fooled me. And then I had a little phase where I would read the books that I was forcing her to read. And I would read them just so that I could make sure she was reading them. But I never really liked to read. <laughs> so um, This whole time I thought she was a bookworm like me. A fraud. I thought she could re relate. Yeah. But she's a fraud. Yeah, I was a fraud. <laughs> so, um, but no, what I said that I was going to do. Now... 
I'm not a reader, but go look at my Kindle library. Yeah. Stacked with Stacked books. Stacked with books. Okay. We got, okay, just to name a few. We got The Bait of Satan. Yes. Okay, that's one. We got The Crushing by yes. T.D. Jakes. Absolutely. Um, uh, what sis, else on there? Sis Don't Settle. Sis Don't Settle. Yeah, that, that's that's a good one. That <laughs> don't sound like a, a book that, that pertains to God and stuff, but it, it is. It does, yeah. Um, it is. And it's a whole other, it's a whole bunch of books I got books a few that books got. from Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that too. Yeah, uh, my library stacked because I, I, I mean well. Mm-hmm. I have intentions to. It's in your heart. Um, <laughs> but I'm busy. Yeah. With all the things um, yeah. that are not replenishing me, that are not nourishing my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I need to learn from you. And so one thing that I was going to try to do to apply this this principle, because I feel like the same with you. Um, I already spend time with God. I yeah. spend personal, intimate time with God. Um, it, it, that wasn't the case, uh, uh, over a year or so ago. And, um, you know, life started kicking my butt. It was kicking my butt. And so, um, that kind of helped me to refocus. Yeah. Um, and so I started refocusing. I want to say it was probably like, um, uh, February, March of 2022. Yeah. Is when, um, uh, glory to God, I was able to, I mean, things were not going well for me at that time. But thank you, Lord, just having some some sense to know that when things are like that for me, what I got to do. Yeah. So I went before God and I kneeled down before God and I just simply at the time I was so overwhelmed um, with emotions and things that was going on that all I could say in our time together was help me. Mm. That's all I can. And and because sometimes we think it has to be like all elaborate and stuff. Um, he just wants us in his presence. So I got into the the presence of the Lord and I just began because my heart was so heavy and I just began to say, help me. Yeah. Um, and that, and, and from there, um, it kind of took my level of devotion to another level. And uh, maybe, you know, on a, on a, on a future episode, we can get into the, uh, the details of all of that, but I'll just leave yeah. that there. So my time, the time that I spend with God, it's already there. Um, I wake up very early in the morning and, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, that's when I spend my time with God. And so that wasn't a, a focus, but I feel like um, the other things that I do throughout the day, outside of the the basic necessities of life, uh, it's necessary to work, you know? Yeah. So outside of that, I would like to, um, I, I feel like God is always calling us to a, another level. We should never be okay with, well, well, I'm doing this part, God. And so I feel like, yeah, I spend time with God. I speak to him. We have a personal connection. We have personal relationship, but I do feel like God is, um, calling me, um, to a different level and a different level of devotion. And so therefore I, I want to stop, um, um, using so much frivolous time on social media just imagine i can and it ain't for me it's not just about reading books which i'm gonna do that because I, I just <laughs> we'll y'all, see baby i just bought two more new books oh my goodness she I- just added she added to the library y'all she she added to the library it's good books though and i'm gonna take full advantage of these books that she's that she's buying but yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to take, you know, so I bought two more books. So yes, I am going to start, uh, deviating the time towards, uh, from, from doomless strolling to reading these books, but also it doesn't even have to be just that. What about taking care of your body? Oh yeah. What about going for a Self-care, walk? Self-care y'all. Um, exercising. Yeah. You know, things like that. So I'm just going to be more mindful. That's how I plan to apply it. Mm -hmm. Um, being more mindful that when I am pick up the phone to go stroll, I'm going to ask myself, what, what better, what things could you better be using this time to do? Yeah. Connect with somebody you've never, not even never connected with, but connect with somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Mm -hmm. How about catch up with your family, catch up with your friends, you know, they probably need, Look at me thinking about, you know, doing the good works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they probably do need a word of encouragement. They probably Ooh. do. They need a, a, a check 
with their own relationship Hold with on. God. Hold on, I just was remind. I just looked at my notes from last Sunday and I highlighted um, something from last Sunday that's kind of tied into what I just said. And mm. it says, "Let your activity flow from the intimacy with God." So yes. I just talked about how I, oh, I got intimacy with God. I, I, I'm spending my time. And so now that's the next level. Wow. That's where he's yeah. telling me to go. Okay. Now that you got this intimacy, then let your activities now flow from that intimacy that you're having with me. Yes. Look. During your intimacy time, why don't you ask God what to do mm-hmm. in that moment? God, what do you want me to do today? Yeah. And maybe he is telling you rest. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, get your butt up and work out. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Go talk to your mama. Exactly. She need a phone call from Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Man, yeah. God is so good. But yeah, I just had to I just had to state that. That's really good stuff. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you guys, what you guys are experiencing is kind of what we do not only in our personal family, but we yeah. also do this in tell a testimony. Um, it's so enriching because right now you have just the perspective of me and Autumn, um, kind of diving deeper into this sermon, but at, with tell a testimony, you have various other people yeah. giving you stuff that you didn't even think about and, uh, are sharing what God has spoken to their hearts, yes. um, regarding these things. And, um, man, it, you, uh, you walk away so great. So I feel like, um, Tell a testimony is open to anyone, whether or not you are a member of one family church. I am the leader of this life group. And so this is my promotion to you. If you ever find yourself, we meet virtually. Yeah. We meet virtually every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Um, so this is virtual. And Google so, Meet. Yeah, that was strategic for me because obviously Wednesday is a hump day. And I feel like sometimes the week, the week can get ahead of us and it can kind of sometimes even beat us up where we feel like, Man, we feel like we'd have been through 10 rounds. Yeah. Um, And so for me, it's kind of sort of a reset and a re- refocus, a time to refocus, uh, remind ourselves who is in charge, who is sovereign, um, and pull our focus back to what's important and have fellowship Yep. Um, with one another. So, yes. so um, like uh, my mom said, that this is open for not only members of One Family Church, but also for anybody just – you know, who who just really loves what just went down down here and wanna get in with the with the with the specialness, okay, that just that we just showed you guys. So you can download uh the One Family Church app. Uh just type in, go to your app store, uh they also have like, you know, Google store, type in One Family Church app and yeah. it will pop up. And you can join um our life group, Tell a Testimony. Yes. Through that. Or you can go to onefamilychurch.com slash life groups. Yes. Look up Tell a Testimony mm-hmm. and you can join that way too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Ah, so that was good. And with that being said. That's the game. <laughs> Peace, y'all, and love. Bye, everybody. Rest. Okay. Um, so that was the ending of brave conversations thank you for sticking with on this episode with me i know this is a long one but we finally got our host back okay this is a special thing and um i'm glad you and guys enjoyed the crossover don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel like hit the notification bell you know all that jazz share with somebody who needs rest okay they need to chill out Also, you can subscribe to our podcast on whatever streaming uh, podcast platform you are on. Just look up Brave Conversations. Look for the purple cape and you'll see us. Um, Leave a a, uh, voice message if you feel like you want to tell a testimony. Yeah. Um, You can do that outside of the life group. You ain't got to join the life group. You can do that here. Okay. You can follow us on social media at Brave Combos. If you're watching the video, I'll have it. Uh, our tag name at the bottom but if you're just listening it is at sign b-r-a-v-e-c-o-n-v-o-s at brave combos we are on facebook and instagram um and if you want to leave a voice message uh anchor or spotify for podcasters that's what it's called now we'll show you how to do that and you can share your story your testimony or just give us comment or feedback on our episodes um again thank you guys for watching listening いつもお世話になっておりますジャムタ Go on girl In this